Grandma's Grandma's kitchen. 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 There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. And ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons, and I'm here in my little kitchen here in Port Hood, Cape Breton. And today we're going to be making Irish potato soup and Irish soda bread. And I've only made the soda bread a couple of times this week, so I'm, I'm a learner just like all of you people. Now today we are also gonna have some musical guests. We have Kenneth McKenzie and his lovely wife, Jenny from Mabu. We'll be hearing from them a little later, but first we're gonna be making the soup and then the soda bread, and hopefully everything will be kind of ready at the same time. So I wanted to say a little shout out today to um, a couple of groups. Uh, just this past week, I was very proud to bake with the 178th Girl Guides in Edmonton, Alberta. We, it was a late night here when they were meeting out there at six in the evening, but we had great fun and they wanted to know all about the Maritimes and what I could tell them. And I got my daughter-in-law, Kelly, who's uh, the Director of Communications for Tourism Nova Scotia to help me join, join the meeting. But they were just such nice young little girls baking in their homes in, in the various places uh, where they live in Edmonton. And uh, it was really nice to be with them. And we made the Crispy Crunch squares with them and they were quite happy. And this coming Sunday night, after our regular show, I'm going to be meeting with the, on Zoom, with the first uh, Bedford Pathfinders. And we're gonna be making the mini raspberry cheesecakes. So it's a great fun to see young people learning to bake right in their own home and with their moms behind them and any help I can give them, I'm happy to do that. Uh, what else was I wanted to say? Yes, I married to a retired math teacher and our daughter Margie is a math, senior high math teacher. And lo and behold, today is International Pie Day for all of those math nerds out there. Why is it National Math uh, Pie Day? It's not P-I-E, it's P-I. And today is March the 14th, which is 3.14 is, I'm not a math person, but it's something to do with any way you measure a circle with pi. So I'm sorry I didn't make a pie today <laughs> for Margie or Cecil, but any of you math nerds out there, you'll get this, because I don't, I, math was never my strong point. <laughs> But I bet you that Kenneth McKenzie knows, the engineer that he is. He'd probably know all about pie. Okay, let's get started because we have a lot to work, uh, work to do today. But the thing with the potato soup, we're going to start from scratch and get everything ready and then move to the stove and have everything all set and all together so that we can have everything at our fingertips when we start. So um, I suppose I should get the, uh, the recipe up on my screen here so that I can tell you exactly what to do. One second. Okay, so the first thing is you have to have a, a nice size Dutch oven. Um, and we're gonna start with melting two tablespoons of butter, but we're not gonna do that right away. I, I am so excited because earlier this week I got my Dutch oven that I wanted so badly since a long time. And where else did I get it but Bamford Chef? But it finally went on sale and I got it. And I'll bring it over to you so you can see it. You'll see it on the stove, but I'm gonna bring it over. Here it is. And you know what? The whole thing weighs 
15 pounds. I put it on my scale. The, 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 the Dutch oven bottom part weighs about nine and a half pounds and, and this thing on the cover on the top, it's cast iron with a, a nice white enamel on the, on the inside. And it's really, really nice from the stove right, uh, top of the stove right into the oven. So I'm excited to use that. I made the potato soup this week in it and it's just so nice, but it's expensive. You know, if you're only if you're going to be using it a lot, do you want to get a good one? But this one is so nice. So we're going to we're going to start with uh, I'll be putting a couple of tablespoons of butter in there and I'm going to to melt the butter. But for now, I'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to prepare everything else that we need to have to make the soup. And it's just so simple. OK, so bear with me. Okay. All right. I guess you can see that. All right. So, uh, this recipe uh, I got from um, Chaz Canning. And I worked with Chaz out in the Alberta oil sands. Uh, he was a great uh, fellow worker, and he made me laugh every day that he'd come into the office to visit. And I loved his accent. And so he said, you're going to have to make Irish soda bread one day. So this was a good day since St. Patty's Day is coming up. So the first thing you're going to do is have a medium-sized onion. And we're going to uh, grate the onion. But if you don't want to grate the onion, you can chop it up, dice it up really small because I'm going to be pureeing it anyway afterwards. So let's do the onion and pray for no tears. And I brought my garbage can over to the table just for this. All right, so I'm just gonna use this side of my grater for the onion and uh, just grate your onion. Close your eyes. Any of the bigger pieces that are gonna be falling down and not being grated, you can chop them up fine, or if you don't want to use them, throw them away. Because that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. I can hardly see. All right, I'm gonna put that over by the stove. I have to dab at my tears. All right, so the next thing you have to do is peel your potatoes. I don't like using the regular peeler, I just use a little knife. Now it says, I think, four large potatoes. Well, I've got five medium potatoes and I think it says red russet potatoes. I couldn't get them locally. So just five, any kind of potatoes is fine. You know, potatoes used to be just potatoes. Now you go and there's baking potatoes and there's boiled potatoes and there's mashing potatoes. I don't know. It's a marketing ploy, I'm sure. Now I'm gonna be dicing them up small. I'm just gonna put them in the water for now. I have a little Irish music playing in the background there, just from YouTube.
I want to say that, well, I guess it was in 2019, there's a, a local tour company here. Ronnie McCacken has Sandy Travel Tours and I've gone on a few of his tours with him. And in 2019, Cecil and I went to Ireland on one of his tours and oh my God, we loved it. We arrived in Dublin and we went right up north, all the way up north and around that causeway that's up at the top, all around down and then we cut across at the last part of the tour and uh, ended up in Dublin. But it was an amazing trip. And hopefully the world will open up again and that trip will be available to anybody who wants to go because I recommend it highly. I loved it. All the pubs, every pub we went in. I think every bartender and every barmaid is able to sing, I swear. It was just so fun. I even, I even got up to sing. When you're, when you're in it with a crowd like that, it's so easy. And we had the late, wonderful Alec McKinnon along with us. He was, you know, 89 years old, I believe. He just died recently. And uh, he was such a great sport. And uh, it was just so nice to have him along in the trip. Okay, I'm just going to take these over to the sink and drain the water off that. Okay, so all you do Can you see all that? Okay, I'm just gonna dice the potatoes up. Now, I am going to be pureeing this with an, 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 is it called an immersion blender, I think? And um, I've had an immersion blender for a long, long time. It's, it's an electric one. And at Christmas, our son, Gordy, gave me one that you charge up and you can use it on its own. It's just dandy. So I'll be using that today. I'll show it to you in a minute. But you don't have to use, you don't have to have one of those. If you have a blender, you can blend, blend the soup if you like. And, um, or if you, if you don't have anything like that, Use a potato masher because when it's cooked, the potatoes are nice and soft. And you can just mash it. And really, who cares if you have a little lump of potato? It tastes just as good. But it is really delicious. Now, uh, you can also put in um, a couple of uh, stalks of celery at the very beginning when you put the potatoes in and that's you can add that as well but Chaz if you're watching out there I hope you enjoy it 
I know he's working night shift somewhere on one of the sites out in Fort Mac. So he'll be glad when I make his Irish soda bread. Okay. There used to be, uh, there, there are lots of Irish folks around here that came as well, long, long ago and settled here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you have your onion and your potatoes and your uh, butter, your onion, your potatoes, your chicken stock. So you're gonna need three cups of chicken stock. One of these is still open. And I have a, a four cup measure, so we're gonna need three cups. I think it says on the recipe chicken broth, but it's the same thing. Or maybe you have made your own. Okay. And you're gonna need a teaspoon of kosher salt, which I do have. I have, if you see, the, the, the kosher salt is a little thicker. And I think it's a half teaspoon of garlic powder, but you don't really have to put the garlic powder in, but that was in the recipe, so I'm going to be using that. So I'm going to take everything over to the stove. The parsley, just the, the, the flake parsley, um, I'm going to put in the soup at the very end, and the two cups of milk are at the very end. In the meanwhile, we're going to be cooking all of this, and then we're going to be um, using the immersion blender. Here is my immersion blender. True, T-R-U is the brand name, and uh, I love it. It's great. All right, I'll meet you over at the stove. Hold on a second. How's everybody doing? Look at my eyes. That's from those darn onions. I know you're supposed to hold a piece of bread or a piece of potato or whatever. I never do, but I cry all the way through the darn onions. Yeah, uh, the four cup measuring uh, cup from Hamper Chef, it, it's great. You get a lot of uses. I have actually two of them and they're a great addition to your to what you have. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Okay. Okay, I guess you can kind of see in there, can't you? All right. So I'm going to start with a couple of tablespoons of butter. And I'm not measuring. You you know what a what a what that kind of size would be, something like that. I know there was one lady that commented on the Irish soda bread and she's from Ireland. And uh, she said for the Irish soda bread, uh, she had the same ingredients that she uses to, to make her Irish soda bread. But she said, I add two knobs of butter. Well, I didn't know what two knobs are, of butter were, but they're basically almost a couple of tablespoons. So anyway, here we go. I'm gonna put that on medium heat. I don't know what 
I did with my spoon. Here it is. Okay. And once that butter melts, I'll I'll uh, I'll add the onions, okay? And you're right. I'm usually not wasteful. And you know what? I can't stand biting into a chunk of onion at all. <laughs> Is that, uh, let's see if I can get some more light on there. Is that better? Hi from Oakville. Hello there. Well, Ontario reminds me of something. My pot, I, I was just, uh, somebody's asking where to get my pot. This is, um, I'll just repeat what I said earlier. It's a cast iron pot and lid. And I got it from my daughter uh, who sells Pampered Chef. It's one of their products. But I'm telling you, it's, it's not cheap. You, you have to really think if you want to make that investment. But it's, it's an awesome, it's an awesome dish. It'll last forever. Hi from Kingston, Nova Scotia. Hello there. Elsie Kent from BC. Hello. But what I was going to tell you is, um, wait now until I put the onion in. And I won't forget what I was going to say like I usually do. Add your onions, your grated onion. And you're just going to saute that for a little bit. Says, says about five minutes. But a little later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post something. Um, as some of you know, I, I do a little social media for Natalie McMaster. And uh, her and her husband, Danelle, and all the kids are putting on uh, another virtual concert. And this, um, okay, uh, Danelle is, his, uh, he comes from Irish descent, of course, and Leahy is, is uh, their last name. So they're doing another virtual show this coming March the 17th. And if you can go over to Natalie's Facebook page, you'll see all kinds of links there that will take you to the show. And uh, you can view the show um, it's a $15 concert, just you can watch it on your computer, or you, if you have the means to hook it up to your big screen TV with an HDMI cord, you can do that too, but you just have to create an account with, with HomePlay, and, uh, buy your ticket and log in to HomePlay, and you can watch the show, and it's, it's going to be great, because there are three parts to the concert, Natalie and Danelle will be live from their home, and then over to Scott, to Ireland. Uh, I'm not sure all of the of the participants over there, but I know for sure Liz Doherty, who's who's spent a lot of time in Cape Breton. She's she's going to be on that part, and then also uh, up here in uh, right here in Cape Breton, up at Minnie and Alec's house. That's Minnie and Alec. Minnie is my sister, and Minnie and Alec are hosting a little portion of it in their home. And uh, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be great. And they're gonna have uh, Natalie's nephew, Joe McMaster, great little fiddle player playing, and Mac Morin on, on piano. And Sarah McGinnis from West Mob, who is gonna be singing some Gaelic songs. So uh, it's really, really, really going to be fun. So I hope you, if you're looking for something to do, that'll be a nice event to have. And you don't, if you're not home on Thursday night and you're out somewhere, um, it, you can watch the show right up until the next night at midnight on the same ticket. And um, Natalie and Janelle are also encouraging people to support their local restaurant or pub and get a takeout before you watch the show or whatever. So 
that's just something for you to do. Okay, that's looking just fine to me. It's not, you don't want it to be brown. It's just getting nice and soft. And I think that that will just be fine. So to that, I'm going to add your three cups of chicken broth. And your potatoes. And your kosher salt and your garlic powder. Oh my God, are those darn stars are on there again. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry, folks. I guess I have to disable them before every show. I, I don't know. Anyway, sorry about that. I'm just seeing stars there. P people don't feel like you have to buy me stars. I, I'm not looking for that. And, and it was some new thing that Facebook started because of the numbers that I had that I could do that. And somehow it was enabled. And I thought it was going to be something free that you could just click on. But now uh, they're charging for those stars. So please don't feel that you have to do that. So what you're gonna to do to this now, you're going to, um, we're gonna bring it to a boil and then just let it simmer. When it, once it brings, it comes to a boil, full boil. Um, what do you say? I missed that. I, I know there was something important there. How many potatoes, four potatoes, four large potatoes or five medium potatoes? I used five medium potatoes. Okay, so let's just bring it to a boil. I'm turning the heat up until it comes to, it starts, uh, it really smells good already. I don't, like I said before, I don't like biting into an onion, <laughs> but I love when an onion is shredded in something and I'm not biting into it. And I love the flavor of an onion. It makes such a difference. Okay. Hello, Colleen. Lots of people. Spring is in the air. There was a big change in the temperature here in Nova Scotia this week. And uh, the time changed last night. We're getting there. Love onions. Oh, somebody said the stars are free? Oh, I don't know that for sure. Yeah, if you want to use it in your Instapot, go right ahead. Now, uh, there's salt and there's garlic, a little bit of garlic in here. I'm not going to put the parsley in just yet. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper. I don't know exactly what it is. Do how much you like. I happen to love pepper. There we go. So I'm just going to wait till this comes to a full boil and I'm going to set the timer for 25 minutes and we're going to then, uh, start the soda bread. So onto the soda bread, while we're waiting for this to come to a boil, I have a cast iron frying pan here. Um, I think it's 10 and a half inches. I don't know. I think it's 10 and a half inches or 10 inches or something. And uh, the handle gets really, really hot, people. And I bought this on Amazon. It's just like a silicone. And it's 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 a... It's, it's just a great thing to, to, uh, to catch a hold of. And so when this comes to a boil, and we're gonna set our timer, I'm gonna put my cast iron frying pan on low. 
I don't know if your stove is like mine, but I have three regular burners and I have a lower burner. The back, this back burner over here is the lowest burner and that's the one I'm gonna use. I, a couple of times when I tried out the, the Irish soda bread I had on my other burners, but it was kind of almost scorching on the bottom. So then the last time I, I made it in this frying pan, um, and you, you can use, if you have a griddle or if you have a, like a non-stick maybe a frying pan, you can use that on top of the stove. And if you'd rather make it in the oven, you know, 350 oven, um, maybe for 25 to 30 minutes would, would bake it nicely. And you'll know, just like the bonnet or the, and you can put it right in the frying pan or on a stoneware pan. I think it would cook nicely like that. Um, but I, I want to do it in the traditional way. And trust me, I am not, I'm not an authority on this at all. And I know there's a lot of Irish people that are watching. So bear with me and be kind. <laughs> I'm, this is just something I wanted to do for my friend Chaz. He's, uh, he lives out west, but he's, he, he moved his family from Ireland for work. And um, so what I'm going to do is, going to, like I said, I'm going to put that on low. So it's probably going to, it'll take us maybe 15 minutes to, to mix up the, uh, the dough and, and get it in the pan. But we need to have a hot pan. Okay. So this is coming along, almost coming to a boil. Okay, someone bought it at Canadian Tire this past week for $89. I guess that was on sale. Not this, not this. I think you're talking about the frying pan, are you? Yes, I did say kosher salt because that's what the recipe says, but I'm sure you could just use regular salt. Okay, it's just coming to a boil. I just want it to come to like a, a full uh, boil before I put it on simmer. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to turn that down on low. And I'm gonna set my timer for 25 minutes. And I am going to turn uh, my back burner on low. And you don't put anything in the pan at this time. I, I'm going to t lightly dust it with, with some flour, uh, very lightly, when the time comes that I'm going to put it in the pan. But for now, I'm going to put it on the lowest setting. So that's on low. And this is on low, and it's simmering for 25 minutes. And we're good. And I have to wash my hands now. So hold on, I'm gonna put you on the table. <laughs> there you go. Look at all the stars. God love you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wash my hands before I start this because you actually have to use your hand right in the dough. And your hands are gonna be a mess, but doesn't matter. We're gonna do this the old way. All right.
just going to get my buttermilk. Oh, I see my cousin in Fort Francis is watching. <laughs> Danette, hi Danette. Hope you got the right molasses this time. My cousin Danette last weekend, when we were making Mamie's ginger snaps, I happened to, to mention to people, <laughs> uh, I happened to mention to people the differences in molasses. Something I would have never thought of until I went out west and was baking at my daughter's. So around here, you'd go to the store and you'd get molasses and you Somebody calling me. Um, so we, we, on our shelves are, is fancy molasses and that's all we use and that's all I've ever seen on our shelves here locally in, in Cape Breton. But when I went out west, um, there was, uh, I just picked up a thing of molasses and was baking at my daughter's and it was the worst thing I ever tasted. And it was when I discovered what was wrong with the molasses, it was called cooking molasses. And then found out that there's also a third kind that is sold called blackstrap molasses. And each one of those, it's first it's fancy molasses from the sugar cane that, that is made. And then as they boil it down, then it's cooking molasses. And then the last and the worst, the most bitter is blackstrap molasses. Of course, I never, I don't think I differentiated that when I put out the ingredients. Just assume that molasses is molasses, but it's not. You have to have fancy molasses. Well, my first cousin, Danette, that's watching today from Fort Francis, Ontario, when she realized what she had after I said those words, she had blackstrap molasses, the worst kind. So anyway, Danette, there's no molasses today, so you're all set. And I know blackstrap is healthy, but it tastes rotten. <laughs> okay, let's get into the Irish soda bread, all right? First, I gotta get my recipe up here. I should know it off by heart by now. Um, so, all you need is flour, salt, baking soda, and buttermilk. Now, for anybody out there who doesn't have buttermilk, um, by now, if you Googled how to make your own buttermilk quickly, or like a sour milk, you just put a, a, a tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar in a cup of milk and just set it aside for five minutes and that'll do. And that'll be just fine. You'll have, have what you need. So, um, let's do this. Okay. Okay. I better not watch anymore. Let me take you down. Okay. All right, you're going to need two cups of flour, now you want to sift, go ahead and sift. Now that's two cups of flour, but I'm just going to take have a little bit on the side here because I'll need when I put it out on the uh, my work surface here on my baking mat. All right, and you're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to put a little bit in my hand. Half a teaspoon of salt. And a teaspoon of baking soda, which I will measure. And people, just mix it with your hand. See that fine? And you know what you do next. This is just like making biscuits, really. You're gonna make it well in the center. But normally what I would do, if I was making biscuits and I put the liquid in, 
I would use a fork and you can do that if you want, but we're, we're gonna try to be Irish here. <laughs> so one cup of buttermilk. One cup of buttermilk. Okay, right in the center. That's the scotch part of me. Get every bit out of, the, out of the cup. Okay. Make a claw. And you're gonna go around in circles if you're doing this with me, okay? You're gonna have awful sticky fingers. Keep going around in a circle until all the flour is together. Hope you can see that. So you get it right into a good dough. Sprinkle a little flour. And take it off my fingers. Oh, somebody got their Tupperware bowl from Natasha, I bet. That's awesome. Okay, I'm just going to kind of work it together here. Not very much. Okay, there, that's plenty. And you know what? I have to put some flour on my hands and I'm going to wash them off with flour to get the stickiness away or else it'll drive me crazy. All right, so I'm not going to use a rolling pin. I'm actually just going to press it down. I'm going to just flour my fingers a little bit. Until it's about half an inch thick. Okay, Margie, Margie, if you're watching, this is as good as I can get for you math nerds. This is my pie. <laughs> okay, let me just check the, yeah, you, you really want to, I'm going to make mine a half an inch thick because you just want to be careful because it's going to, the soda is going to make it Puff up. All right. So, you're gonna put a blessing on it. You're going to, now you can just cut it partway through and partway through. You're gonna make the cross for the blessing or do what I do. I'm actually gonna cut all the way through so that I have four cut quarters. All right, so we're gonna put the Irish blessing on here and cut it all the way through. And then right across the center again. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I have a sharp knife here. I'm gonna poke each quarter 
to let the fairies out. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to that, but that's what I've been told. So anyway, we're all ready to put them in the frying pan. So I'm gonna bring two over and then I'll bring you over as soon as I get the other ones in there. How are y'all doing? Now, can you see it? All right. So I have a um, little spatula here. You're going to put that seven minutes on each side and just make sure it's not burning on the bottom. I'll use my other timer because my this timer is got 12 minutes left and this is going to take about 14 minutes in total. So the kitchen timer, seven minutes. And there you have it. And it will swell all up and it's just so so cool and it's really really like a biscuit i have one left from the other day when i made it i thought i had one left but cecil had sliced half of it off, but this is, this is the color you're looking for on one side. And that's the, the inside, but that's the color that you're looking for after the end of the seven minutes, okay? Give your soup a little stir. While that is cooking, I wanted to uh, tell you a couple of things here. There. Okay, you can see our guests there in the background. I'll just let them you see them just yet. <laughs> um, not this past week, but the week, the week before this past week. Oh my gosh, look at my hands. <laughs> um, I had the, the pleasure, and I say that lightly. Um, it's, it, yes, you can cook it in the oven. I, I know some Irish cook it in the oven. I'm just doing it Chaz's way on top of the stove, but yes, you can bake it in the oven, 350. Um, thank you, Lo. <laughs> um, you can cook it in the oven, 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes, I think is what I've, what I've had. Um, but yeah, a week ago, I went over, I was invited over to Tell Ill Community Television in, in um, no, Arishat. And, um, they, they would just wanted to interview me about Tunes and Wooden Spoons, like during COVID and how it happened and all of that stuff. What an amazing facility that they have there. And the guy that looks after all of the tech stuff, you should see the room that they have, the cameras and everything you could even imagine. Well, the fellow that's in charge of all that is Nick Boudreaux. 
Nick the Pick, the guitar player that was here um, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, with uh, Robert Bouchard. It's he's uh, his guitar player that he takes on gigs with him, and he's played the, with the Bear McNeils and the Rankin family. But he is the guy behind the camera and gets everything right. It was amazing, and if you look up Tell Ill on the internet, Tell Ill is T E L I L E. Uh, Tell Ill. TV and they have a menu on there and tells you when everything's going to be on. So I have no idea when that interview will be aired, but they will let me know and I'll let you know if you wanted to tune in because I think if you have Bell Fiber Op or Bell Satellite, it's on in the in the channels there, but I'm not sure just where, but their their website will tell you that. Um, and also, I uh, there's a literacy group over there which I thought was so cool, uh, helping children who, who uh, hear stories from different people, like different personalities, uh, you know, around Cape Breton. And I got to go into another room after my interview was done, and I got to read this uh, donkey book for, for children. It was so fun. And then I contacted Natalie, my niece, and she did one as well, one of her favorite, I think it was the musical mole or something like that, with Boda Fiddle, that this little mole that lives underground, and uh, they uh, they're going to be giving that to their literature group. But what a great idea to to help children enjoy reading and enjoy books. So if uh, if I know any more, I'll let you know. And uh, you all know that Mac Moran has been here. Uh, playing piano a few times for us. And uh, another time in Halifax, I had Wendy McIsaac playing the fiddle. And uh, they're both in a band called Beolach, B-E-O-L-A-C-H, which in Gaelic means, I think it means lively youth. And they've been a band together since the 90s, and they've been nominated for a Juno Award, and you can vote. So I did post something earlier, uh, maybe yesterday, and if you get a chance to, to give them a, a, a little support there, that would be wonderful. Uh, yes, Tell Ill is a wonderful place. And uh, Becky, the gal that works there, uh, I know she's an executive director or something. She is just amazing. They're just such talents, both of them. And... I also want to tell you a couple of things, but I'll tell you maybe after the show. I have a, a few announcements to make about next weekend. It's going to be our one year together. You and I, good friends, we're going to meet together and some of the kids, our kids, will be down from Halifax. And this week is March break and I'm expecting some of them to come from Halifax. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, I'm going to turn this down now so you can see how, how it's looking. I'm so scared that it's going to, to burn, but that's the hard part about cooking on the top of the stove. Oh, it's looking good. It's looking good. So that's seven minutes. So I'm going to turn it over now. Great that I get that. Okay. I hope you're seeing this, yes? Ooh, that's hot. So it's puffed up quite nicely with the soda. Okay, I'm gonna set that for another seven minutes. And and that seven minutes should do it. And but if in any way, shape, or form, if you know if you if you touch the, the raw edges. You can always stand up every side and just, you know, do a couple of minutes on each of those sides to make sure that that everything has has cooked. <sighs> oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to share my kitchen with you, for sure. All right. I'm going to have a look at this soup. There's four minutes left. And what's going to happen with, uh, with the soup is I'm going to use my blender and I'm going to blend it and the, the the immersion blender you can 
I'm the wonky donkey. Yes, the book I read was a follow-up to the wonky donkey, and that was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Anyway, better not watch. So, okay, I'm going to uh, take you over to the soup now to see how that's doing. We can keep an eye on both of them there. How's that? You can see that it reduces quite a bit, but we'll be adding the two cups of milk to that. I'm actually gonna get my, pour my milk in um, my cup now. So two cups of milk have ready. Now, I have a little whipping cream left, and, oh dear, sorry guys. The Musical Mole, I can't remember if it's called Music no Mole. I'll, I'll, I'll find out. Uh, but anyway, I have some whipping cream left, and I have 1% milk. But the recipe calls for whole milk. Sure, if you want to eat it the way it is with the with the potatoes after you add the milk, by all means, eat it with that with the chunky. That's fine. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just following the recipe. So I'm going to put some of my leftover whipping cream in here. That's all I had left. And if you have anything in that you want to use like that, your coffee cream's getting old, old just about out. Do that. And I'm adding 1% milk to that to make two cups. So just have that at the ready. But the, it, should, it should be whole, whole milk. It gives it a more full, full taste there. Sorry for the noise. I'm just going to get this ready to put my uh, soda bread on. Okay, we have 30 seconds left on, in the potato soup. Just going to show it to you here. Oh, great. Oh, my God. I almost had a catastrophe, people. <laughs> okay, there you go. Please stay. Okay. I'm a little cake duster here. I'm just gonna check the potatoes. Oh yeah, they're nicely done. So I'm going to take my blender and I'm just going to use an up and down motion. part of that and just dipping it down until the potatoes are basically mashed and it's nice and smooth. Can you see the inside of that? I don't want my phone in here. in there that's absolutely fine
I'm just going to check this. Now you do it to your preference. I could have kept on pulsing that, but I actually love a little bit of chunks of the potatoes in it, and that's the way I like to eat it. Okay, now add your milk. And stir. And you're gonna bring the heat on again, just until it's warm. Don't. I wouldn't let it boil, just until you can tell that it's nice and hot. Oh my gosh, that smells really good. Okay, I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm going to check the soda bread. It's nicely browned. See? Nicely browned. And it certainly looks like it's cooked. There's no doughy parts there. And I'm going to put it on my oven, my cookie rack to cool. It really looks awesome. And in about two minutes, we're gonna have some great music. And you're gonna see some dancing. It's really good. At this point, at this point, you would add a little more salt or more pepper to your preference. And um, just for, I'll put some in the actual serving of the bowl, but I would add a few of those parsley flakes there. It just makes it look pretty. And if Kenneth and Jenny are up for it, they have to sing for their supper. <laughs> and we'll enjoy a bowl of soup and a little bit of soda bread with some nice butter after a little bit. After a little bit. Doesn't that look great? And you know what? That's just hot enough right there. You don't want to bring it to a boil with the milk in it. Just bring it. To, to the heat. Now, turning it off, I'm going to put the cover on. That's going to hold the heat really nicely. There now. Okay. So, I get to... Um, introduce these two beautiful people. And then I'm going to go and wash my hands, tidy up a little bit while they're entertaining you, and then I'll be back to, to have a little chat with them. So, as you know, I have to make all this noise with my tripod. And uh, as I let the legs down, so just bear with me. You're probably seeing my ceiling and everything. <laughs> okay. It didn't, oh, it didn't come down. That would be terrible. There, did I make enough noise? 
Okay, you see that handsome fellow there? <laughs> this is Kenneth McKenzie from Mabu. Well, let me do this. Let me sit down. There. So this is Kenneth McKenzie. He just comes from great stock, I have to tell you that. And, um, well, well, let me, I'll, I'll tell you a little story first about his grandfather. His grandfather was Archie Rankin from Mabu. And uh, Archie Rankin was a best friend of my father. My father died when he was 54. And uh, you may not even know this, uh, Kenneth, but uh, when my father died, I mean, he had been a widower for many years years as my mom died at 37 and I went to live somewhere else as you know and my brother went to somewhere else to, and my father kept the three oldest but when he turned 54 um, that January he died a, a couple of weeks later uh, it was a heart attack but only 54 and I remember saying at the time that I've said this before well he was getting old little did I think how young he was and he didn't have his affairs in order and God bless Archie Rankin. Archie Rankin became the administrator of our estate because myself and my brother were both in grade 11 and still young. But Archie just stepped up to the plate to, uh, to be that person for our family and I will never forget that. And uh, he and his wife uh, have just an amazing um, bunch of children that are just beautiful people. And one of them was Kenneth's mother, Maureen. And Maureen, I knew very, very well. And she was everything that you could think of to do with your culture and your heritage and the language, the Gaelic language. And she went to Scotland and she, she, uh, she brought that back along with a, a handsome husband <laughs> from South Uist. South Uist, right, he was? Yeah. So Ronald McKenzie and a beautiful Gaelic singer he is as well. And they settled here and raised their family. But she didn't get to, uh, to raise them until they were grown. Uh, darn cancer. But uh, boy, she instilled uh, everything important into her children. And uh, um, they're all very talented and um, piano, uh, fiddle, pipes, um, Lots in that family, I'm telling you. And of course, he's a fluent Gaelic speaker and so are his three beautiful children, a set of twins and a little Archie's. Just so cute, he's both the same age as Asher. And of course he married a step dancer and a Highland dancer. And there she is sitting so lovely over there. Hello, Jenny. Hello. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm going to get Ken to take it away and uh, to play a few tunes, uh, his choice, either pipes or fiddle. I, we're probably going to hear both today, and I love that. Holly McIntosh says, hi, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go clean up and turn it over to Kenneth, and you take it away, my dear. Okay. I might start off with some pipe tunes, I guess. Is that okay, Mary Janet? That's just perfect. <laughs> okay. You can explain the pipes, too, maybe. Explain the pipes. The we'll, we'll, we'll just go over some tunes maybe first. Okay, okay. We'll start, up, start off with a march um, and uh, play some Strathspeys and Deals after that. But we'll start off with, with a march called The Hills of Perth, an old Scottish march.
that great? Angus McQuarrie is watching. What his name? John Paul McKinnon. Somebody's asking. I don't know. I didn't see the previous, but you remember John Paul? John the Burnt Paper. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess somebody was must have been talking about it in the feed, but I, I missed that. John Paul McKinnon lived right here in Port Hood, and he was a piper, and uh, he was one of the pipers that was photographed for the opening of the Kansas Causeway, I think. That yeah, was kind of a famous right. picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to tell you a funny story about John Paul McKinnon. I might have talked about Hamish Moore here before, but do you know this story? Uh, no. <laughs> well, John Paul, um, you know, as he aged, he, you know, he couldn't play the pipes anymore. It didn't have the wind that it is required. I, I think it was maybe the mid-90s or something like that. Hamish Moore is a pipe maker from Scotland, as well as his son, Finn. And uh, he was coming over and, you know, researching, you know, the, the piping world over here and the music and the dancing. Anyway, he came here. I think Frank McConnell, step dancer from Scotland, was also with him that trip. And uh, they, they had gone to visit John Paul McKinnon, and they were very interested in the old tunes. And uh, John Paul said, well, I just, I can't play anymore. So uh, Hamish... Hamish said, well, how about I, I, do, I blow into the pipes and you just do the fingering? Ringing any bells? Yeah. <laughs> and, and John Paul said, yeah, I could do that, whatever. So what happened was Hamish was doing the fingering and John Paul was, no, John Paul was doing the fingering and Hamish was blowing into the, what do you call that? Mouthpiece. The, the mouthpiece, whatever. And when Hamish looked up, John Paul was doing the same thing. He was going, <laughs> because he couldn't do the fingering without doing the blowing in, in his mind. It was just a synchronized thing. And I thought, wasn't that something? And he still, he still did that. And Hamish just thought that was the greatest thing. <laughs> so anyway, so how long have you been playing the pipe since you were a kid? Since I was a kid. Started with nine or ten, I think. Nine or ten. Like and when did you start the fiddle? Seven or eight. Seven or eight. That, Just anyway, yeah. full of music that home. And uh, that's great. And Kenneth, what is your role at the Gaelic College? <laughs> I work at the Gaelic College as the director of education and look after the news site in Mabu as well. Yeah, did you see the news? Did you hear the news today, anybody? I posted it on my site. I forgot to unplug the phone. <laughs> oh dear, I'll, I'll, I'll just ignore the phone ringing in the background. But uh, yeah, there was a big announcement, big announcement yesterday of the funding for the old convent in Mabu, which is on our old family property yes. that yeah. my grandmother had sold to the Sisters of Notre Dame and they closed the convent and the Gaelic College acquired it. And uh, now they've got some great funding to uh, have that as, as a extension of the Gaelic College. And you're going to be the director of that. Yeah. And uh, send your people there and your kids and watch for the program. It, it, of all of that stuff will be on the Gaelic College site, what will be done there and all of that, right? It will be, yeah. It will be at some point. Yeah. Anyway, I'll stop talking now, and I'm going to hear more. Of whatever you have in your back pocket or your lovely wife, let us know. Okay. And uh, We will do some Irish tunes ha! for the occasion. For the occasion, sounds good to me. Somebody attended the... Uh, the uh, con uh, the convent school in 1965. I missed your name, but yeah, they had a lot of boarders at that convent. It is great news for Cape Breton. Yes, it is. All right, some Irish tunes coming up. I'm back to the kitchen. See you in a minute. It smells so good, right, Janet? <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thing. We'll try some reels. Maybe the reel of Rio and Mick O'Connor. So I learned things from my brother. Uh, but they're two Irish reels. So we'll do them for St. Patty's Day for Mary Janet's Irish recipes. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's just, you know what? It's just amazing. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that, you know, these musicians are so multi-talented. They can switch from the pipes to the fiddle. And you should hear his brother, Callum. You switch from soup to soda bread. <laughs> Soup to soda bread. It's not the same thing, believe me. <laughs> but no, that's, that's that's awesome. And yeah, anyway, where is Callum, your brother? Callum's in Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah, school teacher. And he's a school teacher, and is he still playing the piano? He is. It's and does he play the fiddle? Yeah, and his wife is a lovely fiddler to an Irish fiddler. An Irish fiddler? Yeah. Is he watching today? <laughs> Callum, sure. if you are, I love you. <laughs> I, I, I remember, uh, I, I've told you guys before that I had this little group called the Celtic Crew for a couple of years, and Callum was, was there, maybe in it for one or two times or one, something. Yeah, the first year. <laughs> the first year, but anyway, uh, a group of, of uh, you know, high school students in Mabu, and uh, they were asked to be open for Natalie McMaster's Celtic Colors concert. And Natalie was delayed. Their plane was delayed, so uh, she couldn't be there to start. And the, the, the gymnasium of Wakagama School was absolutely packed, was sold, sold out. And here are these wonderful kids. You know, there was Margie Beaton was one of the fiddlers. Our Mitchell was singing. Callum, his brother, was the piano player. I think Tara Rankin from Mabu was a Gaelic singer in it. Stephanie McDonald, Kimberly Gillis. You know, anyway, there's, there's, I hope I didn't forget any of them. But anyway, Callum being very quiet, similar to Kenneth. And, and uh, Margie, I had each one of the kids had to take a turn uh, introducing the next number so that they would public speak and be comfortable. And I was just at the back. And, of course, they had to play longer than intended and what they had practiced. But they were all so easy. And they all, some, many of them step danced as well. But anyway... Callum had a solo. <clears throat> Callum had his head down and he played this amazing solo on the piano. And of course, what he didn't realize was when the people were clapping, when he looked and they had given him a standing ovation. And it was just, it was so heartwarming. And, you know, Callum being so quiet, you know, just, you know, didn't, didn't know what to say, whatever. And Margie being Margie said, well, Callum, I think they want you to do something more. <laughs> Poor Callum. Okay. You know, so humble. And I loved that. And away he went and, and did another number for them. And it was so nice to see all that support. And uh, and all of those kids, they deserved so many. They, they even, Mitchell had to give his guitar to Natalie's guitar player because his guitar didn't come. The, the, I think the MC might have been Burton McIntyre from Wakagama. He had to get a pair of black socks for Natalie. She needed that. It was, it was crazy, all the things that happened. But it was just one of those moments that you'll never forget. And I'm sure they won't either. But I remember Callum and how humble he was. And couldn't believe that these people were all standing for him. So, hi, Callum. And if you're not watching live, you better watch on the replay. <laughs> they are in Ottawa. Okay. All right. Over to you again. We get some steps. I love that. Okay. We're going to have to make sure we see her feet. This lady okay. is just got the neatest feet. She's been in Celtic colors many times. And uh, last, uh, last October, she did uh, her step dancing. Uh, who was playing the fiddle? Uh, Rachel Fourth? Davis. Rachel Davis, yes, Rachel. And uh, it was just an, a beautifully executed number of uh, the true um, close to the floor step dancing that you could see. And I was so proud of her. <laughs> but uh, here she goes. I think. I can't see your head, but I'd rather see your feet. Here now. Let me pull that more over this way. How about that? There. Try not to knock anything over. That's all right. His floor has seen lots of stuff. Okay. 
has that. Perfect. beautiful Jenny. Won't get her to talk right now. Thank you. <laughs> and guess what? I used to kind of be able to have that wind that she has, but I don't anymore. But that was beautiful. Just beautiful. So how about another tune before we sit down and show the people our soup and stuff? And then maybe after that, maybe one more tune. Okay. Just to We'll, we'll see. We'll have, I have some things that I have to say, and then we maybe we, if you drink your soup really quickly, we'll have another chance. <laughs> right. we do a slow one? Sure. Beautiful. Beautiful idea. We'll play a waltz, maybe. A waltz. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was beautiful. Okay, I'm going to ask them to come to the table. <laughs> and uh, I never told them I was going to feed them soup. <laughs> but they have no choice now. So I want to show you the soup. Can you see that? It smells really, really good. All right. You guys have, I'm sitting over there. So we'll just kind of see what I can see here. Can you see? There. That's better sight. You can have a few slurps on camera, but I'm going to be talking a little bit. You can have a seat there. You have to tell me if it's good or bad, and you better tell me it's good no matter what. How about that? All right. There's the lovely Jenny. <laughs> so, let's break bread. We'll try this soda bread. I'm just going to break a part off. And I'm going to put a little butter on it. There we go. This is a good deal. Amazing. Yeah. So just have a little sliver of butter. Of course, if it was hot, hot, you know, let's see if I can get this closer to me. But here, can you see that with the, the butter on it? And if you can see the soup. And I put a little sprinkle of parsley on it. So how's the first taste? Is it okay? Delightful here, yeah. <laughs> Poor Kenneth. <laughs> He's on, on the, just putting him on the, what, what, what am I trying to say? Making him, making him uh, <laughs> say anything. So it really makes a big difference what kind of milk you put in. Like I put some whipping cream in with my 1% and it, it's, it's a nicer, thicker soup. I have to have the taste with you. Hold on. Mm. What do you think, Nathan? Oh, it's mm. lovely. Mm. Delicious. And it's so easy. It really is easy. I hope you, some of you have made it with me or plan to make it because it's a really nice lunch uh, to have, right? And I have these three measly, measly little squares left. I'm trying to keep sweets out of the house, but these were the Krispy Crunch squares. I think I made them the third or fourth time that we had the show last year. <laughs> and uh, these are the ones I made with the... Um, the girl guides over in um, in Edmonton. And uh, of course it makes this great pile. It makes about 70 squares, uh, like a cookie sheet style. So when I woke up the next morning after making that with them, I thought to myself, okay, I've got to get these out of the house. So I kept just a few little ones and I delivered the rest to three businesses in, in Port Hood so that they could enjoy a little sweet if they wanted to. So anyway, I have a couple of other things that I want to talk to you about. Um, so I told you about Natalie's show. I told you about International Pie Day. <laughs> I told you about Bioluck, Lively Youth, and Tell Isle. And uh, there's two more things that I want to, want to talk to you about. On my personal page, anybody who's personal friends with me, I'll be posting... Uh, an advertisement on there for a local fundraiser that we're doing. Uh, our church group, the church ladies, are selling an Easter basket. And uh, we're putting new uh, windows in our church. And this many, many community groups are fundraising for these windows. But this Easter basket that, that they are... Um, are putting out it's a complete Easter dinner like there's ham turkey potatoes carrots turnip dressing coleslaw chow beets a couple of pies rolls and sweets milk and ice cream and cranberry sauce pancake mix and syrup bagels jam tea hot chocolate cranberry juice some Easter candy a tunes and wooden spoons apron <laughs> and recipe cards that we made that Margie's photography is on a Biolux CD 
salad tongs, mugs, framed print, a painted inspirational uh, stones, oven mitts, a cutting board, uh, a cookbook, a local cookbook uh, made by our ladies in their church group many years ago, but there's still lots of copies left, gift certificates, candles, and the list is still growing from people contributing. The tickets are $5 each and can be purchased at our local co-op and uh, or by calling the, the, the president, Anne. I'll put that in my Facebook post, but I think it's such a lovely basket. It's wonderful, and for anybody, they'll deliver the basket to you. So really, it's the people, the local people, you know, in a, in a reasonable uh, radius of where we live um, can... Uh, and have it delivered right to their door. So it's a great fundraiser, and um, I just wanted to do that shout out for, for my local group. But the one thing that I'm most excited about is next weekend. So next weekend is our anniversary show, one year, really on March the 22nd is when the first uh, baking show happened. And uh, so Brennan will be here, and Mitchell will be here, and Kelly will be here, and uh, Krista's coming down, she'll be here. And uh, anyway, it's, it's just, it's, it's going to be a nice family day here, and we're all excited about that. And I decided I wanted to do something for all of you, or not for all of you, <laughs> for some of you. So I got... Um, Margie had given me a, um, a bag at Christmas that said Tunes and Wooden Spoons that she just threw in with some uh, Christmas gifts that she and she had got it printed. So I had asked her to, you know, order 20 more for me, but we wanted to make them kind of extra special. So I'll show you this one size side says Tunes and Wooden Spoons. It's a nice size bag. And on the other side, that's my handwriting. Love one another. And all the hearts, that's all the love of you guys. And so I ordered 20 bags and they just came the other day. And so what I want you to do, 20 of you are going to get one of those. And um, I am going to ask you to email me on my Tunes and Wooden Spoons email, tunesandwoodenspoons at gmail.com. And maybe you can just tell me what your favorite moment was on, on Tunes and Wooden Spoons in the last year. But what I'd really love is maybe you have a one favorite recipe that's been in your family that you don't mind sharing. And, uh, and maybe I can try that recipe out sometime on the show. And uh, I'll put all of those names in a spreadsheet like I usually do for the other contests and 20 people will, will receive one of these. And the, then the, there's going to be one other prize, prize, whatever, in there. And I want to, one person uh, or one family, uh, let's, let's cook together on Zoom, just you and I. And it can be a lunch, it can be a supper, it can just be a sweet. It's going to be your choice. And it doesn't matter where you live, and we can do the Zoom thing. And uh, I'll take a draw for, for one person. Uh, and that'll be something special for you and I. And uh, also want to say thank you to everybody who enjoyed Ivor Gillis's Words of Wisdom. Wasn't that a wonderful thing last weekend? Uh, I, thank you for loving it the way I did. He, he, amazing man, 100 years old, and giving that, the, those pieces of, of wisdom. I'm just going to ask Kenneth and Jenny what kind of words of wisdom that they would like to impart onto the world. And we'll see, putting them on the spot here. I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. Now, I don't know if you ever read um, Ivor Gillis's words of wisdom, but they were amazing. If you get a chance to have a look at them, for, for somebody who, at that age, still smart and agile and plays golf and everything, he turned 100 in December. Right. And uh, anyway, I, uh, what would you like? What would you like to 
to impart on us or how to they would you'd like some your kids to live their life when they're older or something like that um well jenny and i were speaking about this on the way over i guess and not that we are very good at it but uh <clears throat> she mentioned a proverb a gaelic proverb uh that i kind of like uh, uh but it's okay say but little but say it well mm, i like that <laughs> Say but little, but say it well. You're going to have to write that down for me. Will do. Yeah. In both Gaelic and English, <laughs> God help me. <laughs> but I like that. Isn't that great? Okay. Hi, Mary Farrell. Oh, that's wonderful. So, anyway, don't send me any messages um, on Facebook about your favorite moments or your recipe, email me. And only the email ones will count. And I want to ask you to do that this week. And the deadline will be 12 noon next Saturday. So give me a chance to put the names uh, into the spreadsheet. And uh, we'll, we'll pick the names on Sunday during the show. And... Uh, we're going to be making next Sunday um, a little chocolate dessert, a layered chocolate delight with chocolate pudding and Cool Whip and just a kind of a shortbread based bottom. But I'll send you all the directions so you'll have that. And uh, it's a delicious treat and it makes a big pan. So there'll be enough for all of us that will be celebrating next Sunday. And uh, so, that's, I think, hope I'm not forgetting anything, but um, can you believe that it's been a year? Isn't that something? I just can't believe it. If anybody ever told me that I'd be doing this, I'd say that we're absolutely crazy. <laughs> but I'm so glad that we are friends and that this has come to this and I want to celebrate who we are here in Cape Breton and I want to everybody out there to love Cape Breton as much as I do and to come and visit and uh, take part or it, let's go to the Kayleys and all of the places when we get to do that again it's going to be great and support our musicians and thank you for doing all of that and there's lots of more great musicians to come on the show I'm so happy and excited to uh, to have some names uh, listed right into June and uh, people are are wonderful to share that and coming, you know, giving, giving it to me and you from the bottom of their own hearts and all of that. It's great. So maybe I can convince Mr. Kenneth to play us another tune to bring us to a close here. And uh, whatever you think is, is good, Callum. Callum. I'm thinking of Callum. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> so we'll just we'll just do it from here and you can hear uh thank you very much people bring it over to the kitchen table isn't that the best things happen around the kitchen table yeah, yeah. ready to go how's that Thank you, Mary Janet. That was delicious. Oh, mm -hmm. you're very welcome. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> we have to see his lovely wife there. Look at her. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Enjoyed that, everybody. <laughs> well, anyway, um, and, and so many people think that all my guests are left-handed. They're not. They're all right-handed. They're not self-paws. It's just the way the the video shows everything backwards. And uh, but Kenneth, Kenneth is right-handed, as are everybody I've had on the show so far has been right-handed, and everybody thinks that they're all left-handed, but they're not. Everything is backwards. But anyway, have a wonderful week, everyone. And know, you know very much that you matter to me. And I love you all and love one another. Bye-bye, everybody.